All right, guys, good morning. Mr. G bringing myself coffee. You cross out, and today we are going to talk about space to armor. Uh, I had some requests to do this one. I'm by no means an expert in space to armor, but I think I know enough to give you the general principles behind it. So we are going to compare layered armor to space to armor. And we're going to talk about uh, how the game mechanics work and uh, why you should probably be using space armor. Um, space armor you're going to want to use if you're getting shot at by cannons or explosive weapons that have a spherical uh, explosion to the machine guns and things like that. You're going to be fine with just layered armor. But once you get into higher power scores and you're getting hammered by tsunamis and mammoths and things of that nature, you're definitely going to want to consider putting some space armor on your build. And how do you do that? Well, Essentially, there's two kinds of armor. So you've got layered armor, which is just armor, slapped over armor, slapped over armor. Now we're going to break out fancy JPEG MS Paint drawings that I did myself. I know, I'm an artist. Take a look at this. So let's say you get shot by an explosive cannon round and you have layered armor. We'll take a look at where the explosion impact is. It's in a sphere and anything within that sphere is going to be damaged or do damage. Okay. So let's say you shoot these three panels. You're going to hit all of those uh, for a decent amount of damage. Now let's say we switch over to space armor. Now just, you know, FYI, if you didn't know this, things like grills um, that have passed through, that means, you know, a lot of rounds will just go through them, don't add any HP to your build. Neither do bumpers, uh, neither do frames. So we have no extra HP added here with these parts that are attaching this thing. We've just spaced them out. Okay. So, now let's take a look. Fancy JPEG MS Paint drawing number two. Let's say that that cannon round or that explosive round from the tsunami, it hits. It's only going to damage that first part. Now, in the, this particular demonstration, that's going to be a van door. Um, that could be anything, though. Uh, that could be a Christmas tree. You see a lot of those because they're super lightweight. It could be an inflatable mammoth. Actually, in fact, a lot of the vanity items... Uh, make really good space armor because they're super light. They don't weigh a lot and they look ridiculous, but you'll see people using them as just a way to detonate around before it gets close to their juicy bits. But let's go ahead and demonstrate that now. So pretty much all we have here is a humpback cab, uh, a tsunami, some ammo, uh, and some beams here so that we don't flip over. So let's just go ahead and shoot this guy right in the face and look at the damage. 187 damage. All right, let's do it again. Reload this thing. 81 damage, 150. We already got to the cab on the second round. Right, let's just bang this out. And that's round, what, number four? And then... Uh, yeah. Exploded. All right, on to our space armor test. We'll see how, many, uh, how much damage we get on the first round. Uh, with space armor here. I'm not meaning to charge the tsunami, but if it does get charged, well, that still won't screw up our test. You're going to see that. 119. Come on, reload. Reload. Two rounds. I think it still has a door on there. It does. So each round eliminates one armor piece. Rather than do it, and we haven't even got to the cab yet. We're in round three rounds into this thing. Four, and now we're doing cab damage. Wait for it, wait for it. Five. And it takes significantly longer to blow someone up with cannons when they use uh, space armor. Now, this is a terrible example of space armor, but you get the idea. Now, let me show you an example of space armor on a working build. I just grabbed this one uh, off of it. Exhibition, Iliac or what whatnot. Uh, you're gonna see that they're using the from the forest here. Uh, some bumper bits, some grill pieces. Uh, a lot of these grill pieces. Now these don't add HP, but they're great at holding other bits on, like bumpers, which can block shots and take damage. Look how spaced out everything is too. It's lightweight. It's essentially a shell uh, with parts on the outside, and these parts don't have to have a lot of hit points. They just need to be big enough to get hit by the round because the whole point is they're going to get blown off anyway. You're not trying to tank shots. You're just trying to detonate shots as far away from your important parts 
as you possibly can. Um, you're going to see that a lot on hover. You'll see people running things way out in front of their hover builds. Couldn't really find any great examples of that on exhibition today. Like this one is using a cab really to armor all their important parts with a sideways hover. You should see that extended out and maybe use some, some lunatic pieces way out in front for spaced armor. Like these, this is an example of just layered armor. This build I did the other day doesn't really have any spaced armor at all. It's just heavy layered armor on it. And, you know, that's not ideal. It's not great. Um, this thing we did a few, I don't know, last week or week. This thing uses spaced armor. I mean, look at this thing. One, two, three, four layers. I'm going back towards the mammoth. So all the spaced armor is right in front uh, of the guns. And these inflatable mammoths... We'll take a, they'll take a cannon round, and they'll stop an entire cannon round, even though their durability is only 7 points. So it doesn't matter how much durability a part has, as long as it detonates the cannon round away from your other more juicy bits that do have the durability. So this thing, you know, decent frontal spaced armor on this thing, and you're going to see use of grill parts once again attaching, you know, heavier parts. Now you might be going, why use, why use a train plow when it doesn't add to your HP or your durability? Well, it's a really tanky part still, so that still counts as passive HP if you have to blow through this uh, to get to the cab. I hope you guys found this useful. I hope you enjoyed my uh, wonderful drawings that I did in MS Paint. Uh, if you found this helpful and you'd like to see more, I do have a whole playlist of guides that come by the channel. Check it out. Hit those like and subscribe buttons because I could always use you guys around the channel. That's it for this one. Mr. G out.